The final domain under policies is private payments. More common, however, is the partial step towards such home-sourced privatization through payments by families for supplementary schooling. In some countries, it is also referred as home tuitions. Now in Pakistan, we should be familiar with this concept. Lots of families send their children for home tuitions either to the tutor's home or the tutor comes to their home. So the children go to school and then in the afternoon or evenings, they sit with the tutor. And the family has to make additional payments to the tutor depending on the subject, subjects, grade level that the children are enrolled in and studying. So home tuitions is actually what led to the academy culture in Pakistan. When more children needed home tuitions, what happened was these tutors said, let's just open a place and put, bring all these children together. And instead of going from one house to another to another, let all the children come to us and we will do the private tutoring or the home tuitions. Not a good way to educate, though. Many households directly contribute a large share of their household income to education th through private tutoring or exam preparation. Like we see again, exam preparation also here. When the studies are finished, then there's the ECAT and the MCAT, there is the TOEFL, the IELTS, and you need to be prepared. If you had a good education, you should automatically be prepared to take these tests. If you need additional private tutoring to take these tests and clear them, then you have to really reconsider and ask yourself, did I really get an education? These payments are used to augment the schooling provided by the government or the private sector, both because even private sector students go to these academies and private tuitions and so on and so forth. Most of them go to academies. Some parents of girl students particularly would rather have the tutors come to their homes and teach their daughters. Competition among schools and education agencies. Competition is good if it is a healthy competition. Institutions compete. Private schools compete. One sector competes with the other. So one way of creating an education market is to encourage schools or agencies at other levels to compete with one another. And the best way to do it is in sports and co-curricular activities, but also in terms of examination results. You know, no organization really has looked at the overall examination results of different private schools, of different government schools, and seen which areas are doing better than others, why are certain areas doing better than others. That kind of research needs to be conducted to make sure that children get the benefit of good education. Where a school has a captive market or monopoly, it is less likely that it will respond to students' needs. If I know this is the only institution in this area, for a far range, there is no other school or no other college, and my parents are not going to send me out, I have a monopoly. I know this is the only institution. Why would I look at what you need? Because I'm not in competition with anyone. This kind of monopoly is not good particularly in the education sector. It is not good in any sector, but particularly in the education sector, because I then am stalled. I don't grow. My institution doesn't grow. I don't do any innovative, creative, or new kinds of things. In contrast, where families have a choice of schools, they will select the one that best needs the need of their children. So it is important then for private schools to realize competition is good. Competition is healthy. Competition is not to make the other institution look down. Competition is to try. Okay, we are coming up. Why don't you come and match us up? We'll try to go up further. You try and match. And that kind of healthy competition is what 
all education institutions need. Therefore, one privatization reform would involve creating systems wherein schools compete with each other to offer the highest quality education. It's not the building, it's not having 200 computers in your school premise. It's what do you do with the building? What do you do with the computers and other facilities that you have? That is what is good enough. Now, what we've looked at in terms of policy so far is from around the world, what different countries have done, are doing, some of the things we are doing also, some of the things we need to learn. And that's the whole purpose of this policy piece in this module, is to look at what other countries have done, what success they've had, how can we learn from the success stories from elsewhere, but adapt those success stories to our culture and our tradition and our situation and setting. We cannot blindly follow what has worked elsewhere. We need to tailor it to our context.